this week's tutorial lesson will be our song Guilty Pleasures. I'll be using my Squire 2017 Mustang once again. Uh, the song's in standard tuning and we start on an F power chord with the octave extension. That's the fifth. So you do the root note on the F, ring finger, using your index you go on the F, the first note on the fretboard, on your E string, ring finger on the third, on the A, which is the C, and then octave, the F again, but with the pinky extension, playing the F octave. So, we use this shape in the main riff. The main riff starts like so. That's just the power chord with uh, the octave extension, palm muted, which is where you use that part of your hand on the tail piece of the guitar. And then uh, on the last, I think, three strikes, you do the uh, bar the ring finger across the actual fret of the fretboard, third fret. And then you'll get a nice feedbacky pinched harmonic feel, um, which then leads you into the main riff, I suppose. It goes as so. So yeah, that's just a, it's a run between F power chord octave extension, C sharp, G sharp, and then A sharp. Then you're back into F again. And the rhythm is like so. So the chuggy palm muting part is just down strokes. Uh, which then leads us into, once we've done that a few times, you do that uh, particular run twice, and then you follow it with... So all we do there is rather than going to the A sharp here, you go to the D sharp power chord with the octave extension here. So that's index on the sixth note, the sixth fret on the A string, and then ring finger on the 8th, and then pinky on the 8th of the D and G strings. And then you go back into the... So, and then after that you do the... Then you go into the uh, pre-chorus, which is like so. And again, you do that twice, it's C sharp into G sharp into F. The strumming pattern you want is like a, that's the kind of thing you want. Um, you do that twice. And then on the third one, you do the same trick again. straight to that D sharp power chord again, straight into the F, and then palm mute six times, and then you do an octave chord, which is where you use, rather than your index and ring finger to form power chord, use your index and ring or pinky. I use pinky, but you should get into the habit of using your ring finger to do the extension. Which is uh, the eighth fret is where your root note wants to be, your index finger, eighth fret on the A string, and then you completely miss the D string, and you go straight to the G string on the 10th. And the sort of sound you want to get is and that builds suspense into the chorus, which goes like so. So there's a few like uh, stoppy, starty parts, a few uh, mutes, that kind of thing. 
it's very it's basically highlighting the rhythm that was played in the intro but um extending it outwards so you get the chorus you feel that you get heard there so slow down you want this kind of thing it's the same chords again so f c sharp g sharp a sharp <laughs> So your first sort of stabby, muty part goes that kind of thing, and then the uh, that happens on the second run through, and then the last run, the fourth run, has a kind of so you want a then you go through the um, pre-chorus. Uh, no, then you go through the intro again. Same thing, the chuggy power chords thing, um, stripping the chords back, and then you go to the pre-chorus, and then you do your little straight into the normal chorus, but this time it's a double chorus, um, just helps to push across the hook of the song. Then we get into the solo. The solo starts with a uh, unison bend on the fourth fret on the B string, and you want to play at the same time the open E string. So the sound you want to achieve here is this. That's a uh, typical of like punk solos. You want a lot of unison bends in there. So slow down. It should sound like this. A bit of that went wrong, but I'll digress. I'll show you how to do it. So it's fourth bend with the open E, and then you just want to. First fret on the B string is where you go to, but you want to you don't want to be hearing that E still. You want to cut that off. Then on the third bend, you want that unison bend sound again with the open E. And then first fret on the high E string. And then uh, you go to the first fret on the B again. Double bend back to the first fret on the B string. And then a tiny little run of fourth on the B, first on the B, third on the G, first on the B again, third, first on the G. Sorry, not third. But not first on the G, third on the G, third on the D. Then you just do a little ascending run up the fretboard between the first and the third on the D and the G strings. Kind of like bluesy kind of feel there. So it's a uh, First, third, first, third, bend, first, and then it goes back into the unison bend again. So the first run is... just a pull off twice on the second time of the solo and it goes straight back into the first run so really it's this part that's the main part of the solo the first third first third
that's how I end the solo. It's just the octave of the third. So you stay on the D string third, and you slide straight up to the 13th on the D string. That gives you an octave progression. Then you go back into the pre-chorus. And then you do that four times, including the... Then you go into the chorus for double the double. So you'll be doing it four progressions in total. That's guilty pleasures. You can find that on Reminder, which is on our Bandcamp page. Um, it was the possibly the biggest, the most popular single from the album, I should say. Um, it's a great song to play live. It's still fun to play live. It was written years ago now. But uh, yeah, if you want any fresher songs, check out Noteworthy. Um, we are writing new material at the moment. It's uh, it's more of the same, but a few things different. It's uh, fresh and yeah, coming your way hopefully this year. Uh, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you you know visit our other social medias, like our pages, whatever you can do. Um, yeah, I hope you have a good one. See you later.